appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello again, this is Core TV News on the Hour with Nifemi Oguntoye. After two days of disquiet, the National Conference has ended without rancor. Delegates unanimously adopted the resolution of the conference after the title of the final document was changed from draft constitution to draft amendment to the 1999 constitution. The conference ended on a peaceful note afterwards as votes and proceedings were also adopted. The resolution is to be submitted to President Goodluck Jonathan on August 21. The Bola virus disease has spread from Lagos to Enugu with 21 people placed under quarantine. Information Minister Labaran Marco disclosed this after the Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja. He noted that people had contact with one of the nurses who contracted the virus from the Liberian American, Patrick Sawyer. Health has taken on this matter was to immediately quarantine all those who had primary contact with the index case. And so far, as the Minister of Health reported today, uh, all those who had primary contact have been uh, quarantined, uh, which is uh, the way uh, the global community handles this disease. And secondary contacts have also been traced. There is a strong team uh, in Lagos, which has been set up by the Emergency Response Center, that is tracing every contact that has been made uh, with either the index case or uh, with primary uh, uh, contacts. Now, so far, the number of people that have been traced is 198. Now, out of this number, 177 are in Lagos, and they have been traced. Some are in quarantine. Some are being monitored by health specialists. Uh, their movements, you know, being monitored and. Uh, uh, they are under directive from the Minister of Health, uh, so those in quarantine, and this number includes, you know, um, people uh, so far that uh, have made contact with the index case or secondary contacts. So 178, 198 of them, 177 in Lagos, and uh, um, 21 persons in Enugu are also being watched. And uh, this is because one of the nurses um, that um, was involved in the treatment of the index case, unfortunately, um, uh, disobeyed medical instructions and somehow traveled to Enugu. Um, but some we are. Bitbar President Goodluck Jonathan has launched automatic hand sanitizers to be stationed in strategic places for private and public use. He was assisted by a number of governors, including those from states already affected by the virus. <laughs> if you do, The federal government has cautioned transporters against conveying anyone that is sick without an authentic medical report. This, according to Health Minister Oyembo Chuchuku, is meant to curb the spread of Ebola virus. He also advised transporters to stop carrying corpses unless there's a clearance from health authorities to avoid community transmission. 
Pio Savo reports. This is the first time the minister is meeting with the road transport unions since the outbreak of the Ebola virus. The first index case came into Nigeria through the airport, but now the government is keen on stopping the virus from spreading by road. The first line of defense is through the road transport unions. For you to carry an easy person, ask for doctor's medical report. And that medical report certainly should not be more than one week old. If you look at the date of the report, it's more than one week. Tell your members don't accept that report. Because we want to be sure. Not when we bring you with other, our other passengers, you go and cause problems for them. And even for the driver, we don't want that. The health minister also reaffirmed the ban on movement of corpses from within or outside the country without clearance from relevant authorities. Don't carry dead corpses unless you have a waiver. Three, help us talk to your members about what you had. We also get them to give you information, things, leaflets, and so on. We're also talking on radio everywhere. But we can give you more if what they give you today is not enough. For now, the Ebola virus has no cure. But with this infrared-enabled thermometer, an Ebola victim could be identified. The unions assured government of support but wants the health authorities to make Ebola detecting equipment available at bus parks. Pio Samuel, Court TV News, Abuja. Residents in Liberia are calling for hospitals to reopen as they struggle to deal with an Ebola epidemic. Many health workers have been struck down by the disease and some hospitals have been forced to close, affecting not only those suffering from Ebola, but others needing treatment for other ailments. The government already prioritized the hospital because we can keep the hospital closed. Now every disease that comes to the hospital or patients that come to the hospital will have to come down with the disease of uh, Ebola. There are all related diseases that are non-Ebola and these people are, should be privileged that have no right to be treated as a citizen. So we shouldn't keep the hospital closed because of this. So we need the central government to give all necessary support, especially to the hospitals, so that we can keep the doors open because we must provide safety for our staff, for ourselves, and those who are providing care for us. Uh, I just want to say this to, the, to our president, Mara Ellen Johnny Selly, please try to open our hospital so our people can start dying from, this, from, the, from, the, from the Ebola, because I don't think this is Ebola, but our people are dying because the hospital is remain closed now, anybody gets sick, even from malaria, you die, and they say that's Ebola. So I'm, I'm asking Mara Ellen Johnny Selly to please open our hospital. When we get sick, you know, we're doing the self-treatment because of uh, the closure of those, those uh, uh, government hospitals around so we can go to the various uh, 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 pharmacies around or uh, clinics to get uh, uh, medication, self-medications. Away from that, Oshun State Governor Rauf Aragbeshala has condemned the continued detention of members of the All Progressives Congress arrested by security agents in the period leading to the August 9th governorship election in the state, which he won. He also warned staff of the Independent National Electoral Commission against tampering with electoral materials used in the election, which he says will be detrimental to him before the tribunal. The last minute have been heard of the alleged clampdown on members of the All Progressives Congress by security agencies prior to and during the August 9th governorship election. Oshun State Governor and winner of the election, Rolf Arigbeshala, says the continued detention of APC stalwarts is unacceptable, citing the case of Roti Mipa Fuora, who represents Elisha West local government area in the State House of Assembly. Representing Elisha West for no crime at all. His crime was that he belonged to this party or he belongs to this party and represent this party in the House of Assembly for this state. And for that, he was beaten to a state of pop and taken to the, well, he was moved around, was really deposited in one dungeon. He's still there. Arek Beshala says the detention is unfair on his members, wondering why they are still in detention, condemning what he said they are going through. The law of Nigeria says even if you have committed an offense, you should be charged to court within 24 hours. 
Let's assume it's impossible to have a cup with somebody on Sunday. Yesterday was a working day. Today is a working day. Favora is still there, would you? Favora is still there. There's a member of state assembly. We are paid to him. Those who even arrested him and detained him told us that they have no crime against him, but they are waiting for order from the IG to release him. It's a shame on all of us. What the People's Democratic Party said to approach the tribunal challenging his victory, our regular has this warning for staff of the Independent National Electoral Commission on tampering with materials used for the election in their custody. It will not only be criminal, it will be inimical to the interests of INEC because you conducted the election. It should be, it should be in your interest to ensure that nothing is done to falsify all the evidence in their your custody. No, that should you even escape with it, your conscience will not allow you to go free, and God, in his omniscience, will punish you ultimately. The election may have come and gone, but it will continue to generate issues for some time to come. Rashid Rashid, Paul TV News, Oshobo. Two former allies of the leadership of the All Progressives Congress have heaped praises on President Goodluck Jonathan over the peaceful conduct of last Saturday's election in Osho State. Tunde Bakari and Ginkao Dumake are convinced that the decision to deploy soldiers was a masterstroke that prevented bloodshed. They also commended the two leading political parties and insisted no single party could claim dominance in the Southwest. This is one of the pictures that went viral before last Saturday's elections. And although APC won the election by a wide margin, its leaders have not stopped condemning President Jonathan for authorizing troops deployment. There are however others who believe that the president deserves commendation for sending in soldiers. Yinka Odumaki and Tunde Bakari are in this category. I think the president party lost the governorship in Osho. But I think the president won in, in this election because uh, the whole idea, the black man before this election, that he deployed those soldiers to go and rig elections. Now his party did not win. This has shown that he has deployed those troops to maintain peace, law, and order, to, and to ensure that there was no bloodshed and that no life was lost. So I think that uh, we must give it to the president. There are so many sides to Russian state. Number one, whether you like the president or you don't like him the truth is he has allowed democracy to play out because those who are talking of the military presence it will appear to me now that the presence of the military or the armed forces and the police is to ensure that there was peace during the election while people were casting their votes now if PDP had won that election they would have said, oh, they used the same tactics in equity. APC may have won the election, but Odumakin believes that there is a deeper significance in the outcome. He says there is no longer a single dominant party in the Southwest. In the, in the last three years, the Southwest has had three governorship elections, and, do it, and the, the victories have gone to three different political parties. In those days, it was Labour, in the equity, it was PDP, in the now APC. So multi-party democracy is taking root in the Southwest, and it means that the electorate in the Southwest can no longer be taken for granted by any political party to say that we are the lords of the Southwest. The game with Southwest is open for political ideas and platforms. The two former allies of APC's national leader, Muhammad Buhari, are happy that in spite of brickbats before the election, it went without any incidents. When someone wins, he has won. When someone loses, he must lose gallantly. And uh, I'm glad that uh, Oshun State did not become uh, the boiling cauldron that people were expecting. And for the Mr. President also writing to congratulate Arik Beshola, apart from he didn't participate in the election, shows that he's graduating into a statesman. That's my opinion. That in an election that was a lot of brickbacks, there were a lot of uh, violence threatened, that the election went peacefully without a person being killed, the same thing in the Kitty State, show clearly that he has done well and the security forces must commend it. 
They have ever wondered whether Nigeria can afford such heavy troop deployment nationwide for the 2015 elections. The police have set up tactical operation points in selected states of the northeast and northwest to check illegal movement of small arms, light weapons and explosives. The facilities are to be located on highways in Kano, Jigawa, Salkoto, Kebi, Zafara, Bauchi, Gumbe and Taraba states. Police spokesman Frank Mba says in a statement that the operation points will be manned by policemen who have received adequate training in tactical operation and counter-terrorism. He added that Inspector General of Police Suleiman Abba has directed all assistant Inspector Generals of Police in charge of the zones covering the affected states and all commissioners of police to supervise the special operation. The Executive Secretary of Lagos State Security Trust Fund, Fola Athawari, has said that proper funding for all security outfits in the country will achieve the much-desired safety of lives and property. He stressed that the success recorded by Lagos State in the area of security is largely due to the heavy investment of the state government in security outfits operating in the state. All of these agencies are challenged in terms of the resources and tools needed to address growing um, security threats. And you know they are worldwide. They are, they are, it's just Nigeria, the question is whether Nigeria is prepared, is really understands the, the nature of the threat and is prepared and is ready to make the sacrifice to, to, to fund uh, them. Uh, in Lagos, of course, you know the, the government set up the um, Lagos State Security Trust Fund, whereby uh, both government and private corporations, individuals, associations uh, donate to the fund. We collect all the assets and then we um, distribute and manage them. Acting Inspector General of Police Suleiman Abba has assured Nigerians that the response time for distress call to the police will be a maximum of five minutes. He gave the assurance when they received an Ambra State Governor, Willie Obeyano, in his office. At a spot, Governor Obeyano reaffirmed his government's support to the police authority through the provision of 64 vehicles. Policing is about prevention generally, preventing crimes. But the second important thing, the response. If you have a good response time, then these two things you have. If you have them, try to prevent where it is unpreventable and the crime uh, takes place, you should be able to respond on time. Our desire is to have at least in every police command a response time of maximum five minutes. Maximum five minutes. And we'll do everything possible and I'm happy the governments, both at the federal, state, and local governments level, they are making commitments in this regard. Uh, some have clearly come out to go beyond commitment, like we have seen in the case of Anambra State, uh, all for nothing other than to ensure that the lives and the property of the people are well protected. Why we had a lot of success in Anambra State is because of uh, superior intelligence, uh, that SSS are providing and the readiness of the number of police force to be at the point of action you know, within a short time with the aid of the equipment service. Back in Lagos, 16 initial occupants of the Shogoro housing estate in Ogba area, who owned houses before it was reconstructed, have been allocated flats in the estate. Lagos State Governor Babatan De Fashala allocated the flats at the August draw of the Lagos Homes Ownership Market Scheme. Abiola Oluwale was there. His reporters presented from our studios. The Lagos Homes Ownership Mortgage Scheme is a scheme of the Lagos State Government that seeks to address the housing deficits in the state by providing 200 homes monthly. Addressing subscribers at the sixth draw of the scheme, Gavin Fashel announced the location of flats to 16 initial occupants of Shogun Road Housing Estate that were sacked by flood before the reconstruction of the estate. 16 senior citizens have benefited from 16 homes, part of the Lagos homes, in the Shogun Road Housing Scheme in Oban. 
Two things are instructive from that experience. That if we make a promise to you, we intend to keep it. Our regeneration initiatives that are going across in this state will not leave anybody who is already a beneficiary behind. But that it is going to require us to cooperate. It is going to require us to sacrifice. It is going to require us to break an egg if we truly desire to have a breakfast of our own eggs. Winners of the draws expressed their joy and called for the sustenance of the scheme. They are very fair and transparent. There is no mago mago, it is straightforward. It's so easy because, um, first of all, I, I am conversant with um, the use of web. I know how to get my information um, the way I want. And all I did was just to Google the information, Lagos Home, and follow the procedure. The Lagos State Government reviewed that construction of houses is currently going on at 23 sites across Lagos. You're watching Cool TV News of this hour. I'll be back shortly with more stories. Don't go away. You can now watch Cool TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.cooltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Cool TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. Glad to have you join us on another edition of The Political Arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. Give me 20 minutes to move or they will shoot me. He has no chance for survival. If he likes himself, this is the best time to get out before it very comes. The PDP is the rule of right to his faith. To anybody who thinks that government will fold his hands and allow miscreants to take over the streets of Osun State and cause havoc, is deceiving himself. The good, bad, ugly, and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9:15 p.m. on Forty News. Welcome back. Brazilian presidential candidate Eduardo Campos died when his campaign jet slammed into houses in Santo City in bad weather, killing all seven people on board and setting buildings ablaze. Campos, a 49-year-old socialist who had been running a thought in opinion polls for the October election, was flying to Sao Paulo to record a TV segment when his Cessna 560XL came down, breaking into pieces and igniting a large fire after impact. President Dilma Rousseff, who started for a second four-year term, declared a state of national mourning and suspended her campaign for three days. Campos, a popular former governor of the former governor of the northeastern state of Pernambuco, was married with five children, the youngest just six months old. In addition to Campos, the plane had two pilots, two advisors, a photographer, and a videographer aboard. Pieces of the destroyed aircraft were strewn around the crash site in a bustling residential neighborhood of Santos, a port on the Atlantic about 75 kilometers from Sao Paulo. Flaming pies of rubble sent up a large column of smoke and several houses were on fire. And that wraps it this hour on Cool TV News. Up and back at the top of the hour with more stories. Don't go away. <laughs>